We'll call the meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Have the clerk please call the roll. Supervisor Fountain here. Treasurer Horning here. Clerk Chauvieu here. Trustee Collier here. Trustee Germain here. Trustee Harper here. Trustee Petruzzi here. Thank you. Item number four is approval of our meeting agenda. So moved. Support. Motion by Treasurer Horning. Second by Trustee Harper. Is there any discussion? Be none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. Motion carries. Item number five is call to the public. Nobody at call to the public this evening. Number six is approval of our consent agenda. So moved. Support. Motion by Trustee Harper, second by Trustee Petrucci. Is there any discussion on our consent agenda? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item number seven, we have a presentation. Uh, good evening. Um, we, this is a summary of our 2015 citizen survey. Uh, Manager Wickman had this information uh, roughly a week ago or so, got it here. We thought this was pertinent to go over this prior to the budget discussion. Uh, kind of gives us an idea of where we are. Uh, so with that, Manager Wickman, do you have any comments? Uh, no, I think I'll uh, yield the floor uh, to our guest and have him introduce herself. My name is Pete Charette, and I'm an analyst with Cobalt Community Research. And I just wanted to thank the township again for giving us a chance to work with you guys again. Um, we partnered with you back in the 2012 citizen survey and also the 2014 business survey. Um, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to ask you to jot down any questions, and we'll try to save them um, till the end. So just to give a little background on Cobalt and who we are and what we do, um, we're a public sector nonprofit, and we're based in Lansing. And again, we partnered with the township um, back in 2012 and 2014. This slide just gives some context as to why doing projects like this are important. Um, just the bottom line, it's a good government practice to engage your residents and see how their priorities shift as the economy and other factors change. Some of the study goals, um, supporting strategic and budget planning decisions, also um, gathering feedback on planning and zoning issues, and then tracking the performance from the 2012 survey so you can see how performance has changed and how their priorities have shifted. Now the bottom line, the township has very um, strong performance and exceeds many of the state, regional, and also national benchmarks. Now the ACSI is the um, only national cross-industry benchmark of customer satisfaction in the U.S. and that score for Heartland in 2012 was a 72, and for 2015, that's a 74. And just to give some, t um, some context, it is on a scale from 1 to 100, and it's a composite score of three components. So your overall satisfaction, to what extent you have fallen short of or exceeded expectations of the residents, and then how well you compare to the ideal community. So those three scores combined to give you your overall score of 74. Um, comparing to the benchmarks, the 2015 Michigan governments overall is at a 60, <clears throat> local governments in the Midwest at a 61, and then local governments across the country are at a 61. So when you have a 74, you're vast exceeding the benchmarks there. Um, there are several areas where improving scores can have a significant impact on your overall engagement. Um, in 2015, those drivers are the e economic health, local government management, property taxes, and also parks and rec. And you can see how those um, priorities and drivers have kind of shifted from 2012. Now, these are not necessarily where there's high or low scores, just where you can really drive the needle on overall satisfaction by improving in those areas. Some of the available tools that we provided to the township staff, um, a detailed cross tabs, that are thermal map to show where scores are higher in blue and lower in red. An online portal where you can do some nesting and custom cross tabulations. This is just a sample of the cross tabs and it helps guide your eyes to where the scores are higher or lower. 
it also shows where there might be differences in opinion within each of those different demographic groups. So when you have columns that show all blue, it shows that regardless of demographic group, those scores are pretty consistent. When you have more checkering, like in that far right column, you see that there are some differences of, in opinion um, within those different demographic groups. So this is a really important tool that helps you um, be more strategic when you're out in the community talking to people. So for example, you know if uh, parks and rec facilities have a lower score with males in a particular area of the township, you know that when you're out in the community you can engage them on those topics. The methodology of the survey, so we sent out to a random sample of a little more than 1,800 folks. Um, we did two mailings in November and December, which was the same time frame as the 2012 survey. Um, we ended up having responses from 540 residents, which gives a very solid response rate of 29%. Um, in terms of the margin of error, it's at plus or minus 4.1% in the raw data, and then with the benchmarking questions, we have a little bit of a tighter analysis that's at 1.7. You can see how that's um, compared to the 2012 as well. Um, the bottom line is, you know, hundreds of residents took time um, to provide their feedback to the township, um, and we also did check for skewing, any um, potential skewing based on gender, and we compared that to the census and also the voter list. And while there was a small skew towards male, it was not significant and was well within the um, census and voter list range. Uh, this slide is a little hard to read, um, but it's just showing the different profiles of the respondents and comparing it to the 2012 survey. Um, the bottom line is while we changed some of the um, options for how long they've been in the community and also their household composition, the bottom line is it's very similar um, from a demographic standpoint from the 2012 survey. Um, this is just an example of the um, citizen model that we use. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, just the bottom line is um, we capture more than satisfaction, which, ten which tends to be more of a fluffy term, um, and we focus on some outcome behaviors as well, such as remaining in the community, recommending it to others, volunteering, encouraging businesses to start up, supporting the current government administration, and then some community image and brand questions. All right, so jumping into the data. This slide is showing um, at a high level how the scores compared to 2012 by the different categories that we had. So you can see on the far right column, we have um, the change from 12, 2012 to 2015. And you see a lot of green, which is good because that just means scores went up. There were only four areas where scores declined, and that was transportation infrastructure, um, which we're aware that there's a millage pass and there's more things to come on that front. Utility services, the library, and property taxes. The areas that are shaded in green, those are just those areas that really have a lot of juice in them in terms of in increasing your scores. This slide is showing the community satisfaction um, compared to the benchmarks. So the next few um, pages are going to go through and show you how your score is compared to the benchmarks, which, so we, in 2012, the Heartland score is in light blue. The 2015 score is in that navy. In the dark green, we have Michigan communities overall. The lighter green is Michigan communities for similarly sized communities. Then we also have the Midwest in orange, and also the national in purple, and also for the similarly sized communities. So you can see um, the ACSI score on the far left, you're far exceeding the benchmarks. <clears throat> this is looking at the outcome behaviors. So in terms of those, almost all of them are exceeding the benchmarks. You have higher scores for recommending the community and remaining in the community. A little softer score for planning to volunteer, um, which also saw a slight decline from 2012, and also a softer score for encouraging businesses to start up. Looking at the community image, so the next two slides are going to go over um, kind of the community image and brand questions that we had. So we have the overall score on the far left, and again, all of them are exceeding the benchmarks. 
higher scores for a safe place to live, enjoyable for children, a little softer score for enjoyable for young adults. But that did see a slight increase from 2012. Looking at the community image continued, again, all of them except for one category, which a uh, safe place to bike and walk, saw scores exceeding the benchmarks, higher score with great place to live. Um, while the softer score with the biking and walking, that is one area that we saw pop up in a few different spots on the survey. These are showing all the quality of life components and comparing them to the benchmarks. So you can see transportation is a lower scoring area that saw a significant drop from the 2012 survey. Um, and we'll go through the uh, particular dimensions that brought that score down a little bit in a few minutes. Um, also higher scores for schools, fire, EMS, and police. Higher score for library, which saw a, um, a slight drop, softer scores for community events, which are in line with the benchmarks. And then economic health saw a big jump from 2012, and that's also one of those big drivers. Okay, so I'm going to spend a little time on this slide because it can be kind of confusing. Um, on the vertical axis, we're showing performance of each of those categories, and you can see that it starts at the bottom at a 43, so even your lowest score is still a pretty um, decent score. On the horizontal axis, we calculate... Um, the overall impact each category has on your satisfaction and those outcome behaviors. <laughs> Categories that are off to the right tend to have a strong impact on driving your scores upward or downward. And then the items on the left, particularly the upper left, have less of an impact, um, it, meaning that they just don't, do not have a lot of juice in them in terms of um, bringing your scores up and they tend to be more optimized. Um, when we uh, work with communities and we see um, police and fire in that upper left-hand quadrant, they tend to think that it must mean that those areas are not as important, um, which is not the case in this slide. Those areas are more things that residents expect to work. Um, this is more about what differentiates your communities from others. Um, if you think about it, when you're getting ready to purchase a car, um, you look at things like mileage, price, other features in the car, you're not looking at whether or not it has a steering wheel. The fire, police, EMS, those are things, the steering wheels of the community. So those are things that just people expect to be there. Um, the last point I want to make out is that there's nothing really magical about where um, each bubble falls within this chart. It's really a mathematical equation. So if you're looking at the local government management there in the middle of the um, graph, this is just saying that for every five points that you increase that score, you, you can expect your ACSI score to go up by a little more than one, one point there. This next slide just so, shows how your um, priorities have shifted from the 2012. So you can see that there are um, significant shifts with the economic health of the community, parks and rec, schools, and also transportation. The next few slides are just going to go through each of those um, strong drivers of community satisfaction and engagement, so you can see how those scores compared to 2012. So this first one, we're looking at economic health, which we know overall on the far left saw a big jump. Um, the dimensions that really drove that increase were the stability of property values, strength of the local economy here in Heartland, and also the availability of jobs. Looking at local government management, you have higher scores for well-trained employees, trustworthy leaders, softer scores for wisely spent money and being open to citizen ideas. Um, for a lot of groups that we work with, it's not that they're making poor spending decisions, it's just that oftentimes they don't do a good job of communicating the spending decisions to the public. Then the last dimension there, um, the hours of operation, that was a custom question and did not have any comparable data. Looking at property taxes, higher scores for the ease of understanding the tax bills and the adequacy of payment options, softer scores for communicating on how tax dollars are used, and also the quality of services received for the amount of taxes paid. Then the last category here, 
Parks and Rec, um, you can see that they all scored fairly well um, and are, for the most part, in line with the benchmarks. All right, looking at some of the custom questions that we had. Um, so how to read this next chart. Essentially, each column is its own pie chart, and we listed out several planning and zoning regulations, and we asked the residents if they thought the township should reduce restrictions, which are in red, maintain current regulations in navy, which you can see is the vast majority for most of the dimensions, and also increasing regulations. Um, there are four areas that saw stronger support for increasing regulations and restrictions, and that was mainly for door-to-door -door solicitation, properties and disrepair, so, so blight, um, grass and noxious weeds, and noise and other nuisances. The budget priorities, um, so we listed out many township services and programs and asked them what they believe should be prioritized for funding. The top five are the same from the 2012 survey, and those are road maintenance, law enforcement, fire response, emergency medical response, and also paving new roads. We listed out many of those same <laughs> services and programs, and we asked residents if revenues were not adequate for the township to maintain the current service level of that program, what funding strategy would they support? So they had four different options, raising taxes, which are in brown, raising user fees in green, reducing service levels in pink, and also privatizing or outsourcing the resource in purple. So the bottom two um, categories in that graph, the brown and green, those are really more the revenue-making strategies. And areas that had stronger support for those two strategies were fire, law enforcement, emergency medical, road maintenance, and paving new roads. Getting into some of the public safety questions that we had. So we asked residents to rate their satisfaction with the current level of public safety in the township. Um, while all the categories scored fairly well, their overall level of uh, feeling of protection and the police protection provided by the Michigan State Police um, scored a little bit softer compared to the other two areas. We asked residents to provide their level of support for two different um, public safety options. The first one being keeping Livingston County's Sheriff's Patrol at the same level as most of the neighboring townships. And you can see 62% there either supported that or strongly supported that. Increasing the level of police pr um, presence in Heartland, 33% support, 18 strongly support for a total of 51. This next slide, so for those that selected support or strongly support for increasing the level of police protection in the township, we asked them how they would like to see the township go about doing that. 69% said um, the township should contract with the Livingston County Sheriff's Office to in increase police protection, 41% for establishing a regional police authority, and 36% for introducing a millage proposal. Now, that little tidbit off to the side of that box, um, that is for regardless of their support or opposition, so that is the percent of people responding um, out of the entire uh, survey population. So that's all 540 responses in that box. The graphs, um, the numbers in the graphs, that's from the 264 people that said they either support or strongly support. <clears throat> Looking at some future options, so we had a question on whether or not the residents would support a millage or user fee for some potential service improvements. 33% would support a millage or user fee for parks and rec, so expanding some options or capital improvements. And then 47% 47, 47 um, support a garbage-wide township-wide contract. 
and you can see that the support for both of those options increased from the 2012 survey. We had a question on in what area of the township should the township focus on for development. You can see 58% supported more commercial development, 35% residential, 17% industrial, and then there's 32% who do not support any development. Looking at some community brand questions. Um, so we also asked them to rate their level of agreement with these four questions. The first one is the township should commit more resources as it relates to advocacy on the county, state, and federal level. You can see 61% are neutral on that topic. We asked them if they had seen the Heartland Friendly by Nature branding. 28% agree or strongly agree. The logo and tagline accurately represent the community. Around 40% agree or strongly agree. And then we also asked them if that logo should be placed on the water tower. And there's 34% that agree or strongly agree. We also asked them um, what do they consider to be home? Their heartland or the town or the city that's linked to their, to their zip code? and 93% of the respondents said Heartland. The last few slides here are getting into some of the communications, so how they prefer to receive information from the township, 62% mail, 44% newsletter, 34 email. We also took a look at the communication preference by age, so you can see with some of the younger folks, um, a multimodal approach would really benefit them. Some of the older folks, um, you're looking more towards newspapers um, and less online there. We asked them what newspapers or websites do they read for local news. 61% for the Livingston Daily, 55 Community Life, and then Detroit Free Press at 29%. Uh, we also asked them, we list out several of the community assets in the area, so Township Hall, Township Website, Parks and Rec Facilities, the District Library, the Community Message Board, and also the Meeting Broadcast. Um, in the light, light blue, uh, you can see those are the percent of respondents who never use those <coughs> assets. In the lighter blue, we have one to six times a year. And then in that dark blue, you have the heavy users of more than six times a year. So you can see there's heavy, heavier users with the district library and also the parks and rec facilities and programs. We had several questions on utilities. Um, so we asked them what utility services, if any, they receive from the township. You can see 12% municipal water, 10% sewer um, with no grinder pump, and then 16% sewer with a grinder pump. And then we had them rate uh, the different utilities by their different types. So in the Navy, we have the overall score for drinking water quality, municipal sewers, and then the water and sewer billing process. And then you can see how those um, different scores rate out based on what utilities they have with the township. Looking at the telecommunications in the township, so we asked them about their cell phone reception, speed of their internet connection, and also the variety. You can see that all those scores decreased from the 2012, a higher score with cell phone reception, and lower score with the variety of options for internet. Okay, this last slide, um, we're looking at the additional comments. So we had an open-ended question that um, we asked the residents and respondents to share any feedback with the township. Um, what we put in here is a word cloud, so the larger the word appears, the more frequently that word came up in the comments. And some of the top themes that we extrapolated from those comments were roads, so fixing and repairing the roads. A community, so they're saying Heartland is overall a good place to live, got sm that small town charm. Taxes, they say taxes are high um, and expand the tax base uh, by allowing more businesses. 
and then restaurants, so more restaurants in the downtown area, more upscale and sit down, and no more fast food. Yeah. So with that, um, I will turn it over to you guys if you have any questions for me. And I know I went through those slides awfully quickly, but um, if you guys have any questions, you can always feel free to email me or work through James as well. Out of all the different uh, organizations that you work with, are these results typical? Uh, in terms of, like, the priorities or well, it, uh, in terms of the scores? Because it really... I found it interesting that if, uh, our transportation infrastructure mm -hmm. took such a hit. Yeah, with a lot of the I mean, Michigan I mean, communities what that... Would be, what would be some possible reasoning behind that? I think just the overall quality of the roads right now. A lot of the Michigan communities that we work with, transportation... That was my question. It, it, it was that, is that you're seeing that similar yes. type of drop yeah. regardless of where you're at? Yeah, the overall Michigan score drop, took a drop in, the, uh, in our benchmarking index from 2014. And from... It dropped from 2014 to 2015. It's likely because of all the media <coughs> attention for the legislature not really focusing on that yeah. for so long. And it has been in the news a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I think it's fine. Uh, slide 33, the little uh, side note. Yep. All right. You got regardless of support of opposition, 72 percent contract with the Livingston County Sheriff, 40 percent established old authority. Why does that? Why does that add up to more than 100 percent? Were they uh, forced they could, to take one or the other? Uh, they can select multiple, multiple options there. there. Yeah. Okay. Was that one of the ones that was strongly agree, dis strongly disagree, or no? Uh, yes. It was a five point scale, so it had the strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, and so on. Pretty, pretty big number, 69%. Yeah, you have the, um, and, and still there was a significant number, too, on those who are satisfied where we're at or those who support maintaining the, the service level as our neighboring townships. Uh, so that was interesting. Do we have a, a, a 2012 side by side of this one? Uh, unfortunately, no. We, we did not ask those questions back in 2012. Yeah, we were going to. We did. I thought we had something. We, we had something. some questions, maybe not exactly these. We were putting those together along with our the phone poll we did last year. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll put something together on that. <coughs> a slide. I'm oh, sorry. Because well, I, I seem to recall the conversation that people didn't find a difference from having additional services from having. Right. That was one of the questions. They still felt as safe. They yeah. felt safe, even though we hadn't hmm. we had Done canceled it. our con. I don't, I'm not sure how this to respond to this without understanding. Do do they feel they don't feel as safe as they did in 2012? Well, we have that one benchmark, don't we? Safe place to live. Uh, yeah, the safe place to live. It's on page 31. 31. Oh. Uh, well, the ones were the benchmarker earlier on in the. Yeah, let me find the specific slide here. So we have page 16. Yep. So that second, or sorry, the, wait, which one no. is it? Oh, Page 15, sorry, yep. So the second 15. set of bar charts here <laughs> has the community as a safe place to live, and you can see it was at an 82 in 2012, and that went up to an 85. On uh, page 47, mm -hmm. I just uh, question including uh, if you're the, the question is rating the utilities. Uh, why would we be including people that don't have any of them? And because that impacts the overall number. I mean, if you don't have it, how can you have an opinion? I mean, that, that, that yeah, doesn't seem like that would make sense that that would be included in the overall average. It's good to have a benchmark of those who are on well water, how satisfied they are with their water. Is that what this is applying? I, 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 how is that worded? 
Well, I just asked about the drinking water quality, and then we're able to cross-tabulate it by who actually has township water versus who said they don't have township water. If that... Okay. All right. But the header is yeah, rating utilities. The, I don't consider my well a utility. I mean, not a township utility. I sure. Some okay. people who di did answer that question who don't have who have well water. That's how those scores came to be. Yeah, the, the question itself <laughs> just asked them to rate um, whatever service they use. So it's not specifically tied to the township. I find it a bit amusing because everybody who comes in to pay the utility bill, they all say, I'm, everybody says, I'm here to pay my water bill. And I'd be amazed at how many people of those are only sewer people that say, I'm here to pay my water bill. Yeah. They don't even know what A lot of people don't know. They don't know. That's true. Okay. That's it. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Is it my turn? Certainly. <laughs> Can you go back to pages 20 and 21 and explain the impact of the low satisfaction and low impact, like in the lower level there? So the, are you saying the bottom left quadrant here? Yes. Um, so we're just plotting out the overall impact on the ACSI score. So this is looking at, um, in that bottom left-hand quadrant, those are areas that are lower scoring areas in terms of their satisfaction with that category. Of our community residents. Correct. Okay. And then it's plotted out also with the impact. So what we're saying is if you want to look at just improving your um, overall ACSI score, you really want to focus in on the bubbles that fall to the right because those are the ones that really have the most impact of driving your scores up. And if they're in the bottom right-hand quadrant, too, they can erode your scores as well. Okay. What is the definition of local government management? Uh, that is just the composite score of all of these questions. So the leaders are trustworthy, well-managed government, well-trained employees, and all those different scores. So then when you go to slide 21 and you added your directional arrows, mm -hmm. that's showing an improvement or a decrease? It is showing improvement from the 2012, and it's also saying that it's becoming more impactful on your ACSI score. So you're saying that our local government management has an increase even if it went to the right? Mm-hmm. But Parks and Rec is a decrease because it went to the left? Uh, the score for the Parks and Rec went up. It's just saying that it went up slightly, but it's just saying that it's less impactful on your ACSI score. So re regardless of whether it went left or right, if it went up, if it's an improvement in the score, the left or right has to do with how people perceive that issue as it ties, correlates to their overall perception and satisfaction with the community. Things further to the right have a higher impact on their um, perception and satisfaction that if we were to improve those scores, they would have a, cor a higher corollary increase to the overall satisfaction score than others because they're more important to them. This, is, this matrix uh, is so powerful to, from my perspective because it does help you understand um, you know, last time, I think when we looked at that, that upper left-hand corner um, and the squares were a little more pronounced in 2012. Uh, this is skewed because we have some stuff far to the right. That upper left is uh, one way to describe, I think we described that at the time, is almost optimized. Mm -hmm. That if you have high scores, so they're... they're um, their score uh, and satisfaction with that particular service is higher above the line, so to speak. Uh, that's a good thing. And it's also saying that if we were to improve that service or improve their satisfaction in that area, it actually wouldn't change their overall satisfaction all that much. So it suggests an optimization that, that, that is, is there, not that we should ignore or neglect it. It's just that we can understand, okay, let's look at some other priorities. Um, and then, so you look further to the right, where the further to the right you are, the more it has an impact on their overall satisfaction. So from this screen here, what are the areas that you think the township board should be focused on, just based on looking at that alone? The economic health, the local How do we government. Do that? Pardon me? How do we do that? 
supporting businesses and helping attract and draw businesses into the community, which would the, which would the provide response, though, the economy is a lot better than it was in 2000. Yes, yes. Right. yeah, it went up. Yes. And the better it gets, the more it improves their overall satisfaction. And many of these we have little to no control over them. It's, it's important to understand that as well. It's important to understand that if the condition of the roads or the economy drives people's satisfaction with their community, that's good to know. We can't maybe do much about it, but or we can maybe help understand how a resident sitting uh, here would look through the, these issues through that lens. Um, so we do have to acknowledge some of this we don't have as control over. Do I get a turn? Can I finish first? <laughs> oh, you're not finished? Okay. <laughs> On 27, you talked about blight and weeds and grass. Mm -hmm. And there were, there's, I think that's the last four columns to the right. Yes. Can you say that again for me? Yep. So. Point was there? Um, the strategies here, again, in the green were increasing restrictions, so areas where the residents wouldn't mind seeing the township increase restrictions. And you can see that 59% of residents incre uh, support increasing restrictions on door-to-door -door solicitation, 47%, so almost half, for um, increasing restrictions on blight, and then around 35% for both the grass grass and noxious weeds, and also noise and other nuisances. And how do those compare to 2012? Uh, I do not have that in front of me, um, but I can definitely shoot you an email and let you know how those shifted. Yeah, we should be able to put those side by side because we asked those same yep. questions. That would be great. Yeah, the door-to-door -door solicitation was a new That's one. That's a new one, yes. But, yeah, the, all the other ones were... Um, we can compare it to 20, 2012. And then my last question was on uh, slide 36, and I don't even remember what it is. But it was another one, and I think perhaps you've already answered it, people can vote more than once. Correct. Yeah, there were um, multiple questions where they had more than one option. So this question was not did not ask the residents to rate the prior the, to prioritize the list? Like, do they um, have a number one and number two, even though they can vote more than once? It just asked them uh, in which of the following areas should Heartland Township focus for development, and then they could mark all that apply. So you essentially do get a ranking system with the selection in terms of the number of respondents. For the those. aggregate. Yeah, the, the aggregate does produce a... Uh, a ranking system. Before Joe goes, does it seem ironic to you that people claim they like living here because of the rural area and the wildlife and the greenery, and yet they want us to develop more commercial? Does it seem kind of ironic? Uh, there seems to be, just from my opinion, there seems to be two different groups. The people that want the development want to see more businesses around the downtown, more walkability, and then those that just want to be left alone and keep it rural. 32%. <laughs> you, you keep saying downtown. Do you know where our downtown is? Uh, just along the 59. corridor here by 23. Okay. So you're not talking about the village? No. <laughs> no. Okay. no, I'm just uh, the main main drag there. That word was in the comments, and I suppose you'd have to look at those to see the context. Some people may be talking about the village. Others may be talking about 59. Yeah, I read about a quarter of the comments, and I thought you were pictorial, picking out the major issues that, that the people had were pretty accurate. So far, I'm pleased to say I haven't seen my name in there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Your story. I'm finished. Thank you, Joseph. Good work. You have the floor. Thanks. Okay. I've got to page 35. All right. Oops. Oh. The thing that kind of concerns me a little bit is if you look at 2012 <clears throat> compared to the 2015, the spreads are just about the same. And when you look at the opposed to the support, um, what really draws my attention is the need of more information could swing either one of those 
way out in front of the other mm -hmm. because they're so close. So with that particular question, can it be geared more to the township itself <clears throat> of what we're looking for rather than maybe a general question? Because if we would have given them more information regarding the garbage collection, I think we would have got a lot more support than we, than we did and a lot less need more information. You yeah, know, there, I, there's definitely an opportunity for providing more detail on what the township is thinking about in terms of those two improvements. Um, and by providing that context, you would definitely see people start to pick sides a little more. <clears throat> I, there's not an opportunity to really do that in a survey like this. Yeah, yeah. I know, but see, that it could swing either way, so it really isn't true. Tell us much because they don't have it. They didn't have enough information. Well, it's telling us exactly that that we have to provide them with more information. Yeah, and I know, and we try to do that, that, and I think we. we and the, and what the part me part problem with that question, though, is and that topic in particular, is because people don't quite understand the programming in our. So when you talk about programming, much of the programming is done by nonprofits. The fact that the schools provide facilities and the township provides facilities, people don't realize that unless you're intimately involved with like Haya or the. Are you talking about program. Parks and Rec? Yeah, I'm talking about Parks and Rec. I mean, I, I, we have just a very. I don't know if it's really the <coughs> unique or not, but in most places that have a robust Parks and Rec. Program, the community or the or the schools run that program. You know what I mean. They provide the the resources and everything else and programming. We kind of have a we're kind of like at our infancy on that. So I'm not quite sure. The other thing that factors in in that on Parks and Rec is is the age demographic. If you don't have any kids, you're probably not going to you're not going to really talk about parks. I mean, I saw some of the comments, pretty nasty comments. Like, don't put any money in parks. Why? Well, I don't know who that would that would come from, but the demographic is is probably somebody that doesn't have any children or or uh, understands the fact that that's that's what creates a sense of place which <clears throat> improves everybody's programming here or situation in the township. Some you can, uh, the data is in there to see how people responded by the various demographic groups, whether yeah. it be age or uh, what part of the township they live in or uh, those types of things, so or household makeup. I was a little surprised at that. I'm just kind of surprised by some of the <coughs> tones. And some of the Comments? Yeah. Uh, Not surprising. It's a, it's a drop in the bucket of, I mean, uh, how many hundreds of people responded, a uh, handful of comments are like the phone calls we get sometimes. Other questions? I, I'm curious. There seems to be considerable support for this township by the, uh, garbage service. And is that something we want to... I mean, I mean, it's our first glance at this. Is, what's the yeah. thoughts on that? It's taken under sure advisement. It would be, be under future discussion. <laughs> and uh, at a future retreat, or we said we'd come around to that again. I also think there's a there, there were several comments about Menards and planning. And I, I don't know what more we can do to educate the public about planning and, and what we need to do to be fair. I mean, I, I I think we've done a phenomenal job. We have one of the best ways of our zoning ordinances, one of the easiest ones to deal with. I think businesses come into the community. They now have the ability to look, you know, access that. I, I just don't quite understand. And then the, the message out there, and I still get it about Menards. Uh, I don't think we've ever been we've ever said anything negative about Menards and they made they made a business decision not but it seems to be that we're the focus of it but uh, and now with Walmart leaving I think we're going to get more and more folks who are going to make suggestions of what should happen there so I don't know 
Any other comments tonight? Questions? Pete, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Pete. And we go on to item number 8A, which is Dunham Road, Livingston County Road Commission Project Agreement. Mr. West. Is this uh, the limestoning of Dunham? This is. <clears throat> Good evening. Essentially what we're looking at this evening would be the standard Livingston County Road Commission project agreement, uh, similar to the ones that we had last year for our gravel road improvements. Um, you're seeing this one a little bit earlier than you did last year. What we're trying to do is get in and do some tree removal before we're not permitted to remove trees due to a species of bat that uh, prevents tree removal, I believe, after April 1st, if memory serves me correct. So this is a little bit sooner than what we had at last year, um, but essentially it's the uh, same template contract with just a different road name and different dollar amount. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Why would more trees need to be removed on Dunham Road? Uh, it's more for the drainage and right away whatever is required out there um, it's not necessarily that they're going to go in and remove uh, very many it's just essentially anything that has to be removed in that right away they're getting all their gravel road contracts out there may not be any trees on this particular section it's just their standard practice to issue all their gravel road contracts at the same time so they can bid accordingly uh, for the limestone and get their quantity discount Dunham Road probably doesn't need as much as some of the others, to your point. Yeah, because it was, they just redid the whole road. And in fact, they did a lot of work on the drainage already last fall. But this might even be farther down uh, from Bullard, because this limestone brings it all the way down to Fenton. Fenton. All the way to Fenton. And didn't does it take it through, uh, to, yeah, I was going to say. I'm, just, I'm oh. thinking that might so be So it's not doing the anything case. on the other side towards Dunham no. Golf Course? No, no. Just all the way down to Fenton Road. That wasn't limestone before, was it? No. No. Just a bullard, no. Just, just, a, a, bullard. just a bullard. Right. <clears throat> I'll move to authorize supervisor and clerk to execute the project agreement for Dunham Road Improvement with the Livingston County Road Commission. I'll support it. Motion by Trustee Colaney, second by Trustee Petrucci. Any more of the discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, item number 8B, Special Assessment District 200 uh, Amendment to the assessment. I believe we have uh, a home uh, that is on SAD 200 that when they installed it, the, the main sewer line is in the middle of the road. Yes, essentially, if, if you remember, we uh, did not engineer this project because if a homeowner was to connect on their own, they would not be required to engineer that particular connection. We, were, we bid this project based on the data provided by Livingston County Drain Commission, which had, for this particular parcel, proved to be inaccurate. They had indicated that there was a lead and that the sewer main was on the, uh, in the right-of-way outside of the actual pavement. Um, when we went out there to try and actually do the connection, it turns out the sewer main was actually under the road, which would have required a road permit um, as well as a road restoration, and it was going to drive costs uh, over uh, approximately double what was originally estimated to be the assessment. And again, Ed, uh, that's due to the misinformation. Um, the homeowner has uh, provided that information, decided to just bow out of the actual program, what this amendment does is simply take that balance down to zero. Um, we're fortunate enough to where we had a local contractor who um, felt really bad, quite frankly, and said, I'm just going to fill this hole in and not charge you guys anything for it. And I, he feels bad for the homeowner. Um, you know, he appreciates the, the job, being able to bid on it. So there's actually no charge to the township for this, this particular instance. And we'll have another amendment to this SAD uh, later in the spring after restoration is complete and we have all the finals numbers in for all the other properties. We'll, we'll correct the um, 
um, assessments for everybody on those. But this one is because of tax season, so it can be removed from the tax bill. Yeah. Now, isn't SAD 200 <coughs> to the end of its? No, this is the new. This one. is 200 foot. Uh, oh, this, this is oh, the new okay. one. We right. just started yeah. it. What's the one that just got done then? SAD two. And oh, two SAD two, two was just done. Yeah. Okay, got it. If there's no other discussion, I'll entertain a motion for the resolution. Um, I I'll move. I lost it here. Sorry. Uh, I'll move to um, approve the resolution amending the SAD 200 assessment role as presented and remove the assessment from the 2015 tax bill. Support. Motion by Treasurer Horning, second by Trustee Harper. Any discussion? Being no discussion, I have a clerk please call the roll. Trustee Germain? Yes. Treasurer Horning? Yes. Trustee Petrucci? Yes. Trustee Colleen? Yes. Supervisor <clears throat> Fountain? Yes. Clerk Chauvieu? Yes. Trustee Harper? Yes. Thank you. Our next item on our agenda this evening is the uh, proposed farmer's market <clears throat> pavilion. Mr. West, are you going to take this as well? Absolutely. Um, what you have before you is a, a proposal uh, basically involving three separate contracts um, so we can uh, hire three different contractors to complete this project. Um, as you know, we're uh, burdened with a very tight timeline on this particular project. Um, I think the, the highest probability of meeting that target completion date would um, basically include this path of three separate contractors working on this. Um, we have a land balancing contractor, we have an electrical contractor, and then an actual contractor who is uh, providing the structure itself. Uh, two of the three contractors we've worked with prior uh, with favorable results, and they both believe that they can confidently meet this deadline. Um, the third contractor we have never worked with. It's a company out of Standish, Michigan. However, they were responsible for the construction of the Tawas City Farmer's Market Pavilion. Um, I did reach out to them, and they said they had no complaints whatsoever and would not hesitate to hire that company again. Again, this project is not being engineered. Um, to do the proper bid specs uh, would jeopardize the target completion date. And originally it was June 10th, if memory serves me correct, and now we've been bumped uh, even sooner to May 15th. All three of these contractors um, are confident they can meet the May 15th uh, target completion date even amongst each other. So I'll be, that's kind of in a, a brief summary of it. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions regarding this project or project proposal. So it, uh, it's an issue of timing. Um, this is not the ideal approach. Uh, we don't lack confidence in our ability to do this project uh, by adopting some of this inherent risk by doing it that way. It's a question for the board if you uh, are approving of that risk as well. Uh, to do it the more traditional route. I think the engineer estimated that probably July 1st is even pushing it if we were to go that route. Was that was correct. Yeah. They were not confident they could hit that target. Yeah. So this is a proposal that is in line with a, a quicker timeline that has been expressed before. It's a question of whether the board's comfortable moving forward with that. Uh, we're comfortable doing it as long as you understand inherent risks in that approach. Before I make a decision, I have a number of questions. Mm -hmm. First, the um, aerial photograph that you provided that has the red square shows the pavilion site. Yes. That's not set in stone, right? 
I mean, it's, that's where it's going, but that's not really the, literally the boundaries of the. The GIS imagery only lets me, allows me to do perfect squares. I'd yeah. like to tweak it. I was going to say the alignment in with the parking lot. But yes, I kind of encompass more area. Okay, so we're not going to be working in the. 23 right away. Right. No, 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 absolutely not. I again, it was the, the the graphics program only permits perfect right angle squares. I had the same question, Matt. It's up on my screen. The, the next question is germane, but still somewhat distant. We have in our future capital improvement plan considered paving the parking lot at the township hall. Is that something we've just talked about or do we actually have money set aside and plans for that work? No, and forgive me, are you talking the Hero Center? Hero Center? Yeah. Okay, um, we do have the, the money has been budgeted. It is, uh, I guess that would be when the budget's approved? It's in the CIP. You approved it in the or CIP. It's in the CIP, I'm this, sorry. For this year, this calendar year. So it'd be done in the same year. So how would that project have a bearing on this one? Because they'll obviously be using the south driveway to get access in and out for a lot of this work, and so <coughs> they're going to get torn up. Um, the target timeline, or uh, would essentially have that parking lot uh, improvements completed after the construction of the pavilion in the in the limestone parking lot. It just doesn't. It didn't seem like it was the right choice to have the gravel train haulers driving over a brand new parking lot so we would most likely wait till later in the season uh, I'm thinking September August September kind of time frame for the parking lot improvements there's um, a lot of disadvantages to not having it engineered at least to the minimal point of view of putting some drawings together that shows where the structure is going to be located have you got that in your mind already in order for the electrical contractor to say, I need so many feet of wiring from the other building where he's tapping in and things like that? Yes, we do. They are not uh, certified engineer. They're not stamp set, um, but we do have a diagram indicating the actual pavilion footprint. Um, we do have the engineered stamp sets for the pavilion itself, just not the actual parking lot and or the electrical connection. We are working on that. Um, most likely, um, if we were to wait to see those, it would pro possibly cause a delay in this process. When you say you're working on it, what does that mean? Basically what we're doing is we're still uh, going into the Hero Center to figure out where we're going to pull from. We need to have the actual uh, pavilion site staked so we know exactly how many feet and where we're actually going to tie into the pavilion. So we have a meeting to meet with all three contractors so we can discuss these items. We're going to go on site and stake it and then we'll be able to have more accurate information on that. I went out there myself and did a kind of preliminary stake of where the electrical connection would have to be ran to and uh, that's what the, the quote was based off of. 100 amp service to that stake that I had put in the ground. Right now you've only considered three contracts. Is the, is it Joe's Trading? I can't remember. Joe's name. Tables, yes. Joe's table. Is he also going to be doing all the concrete underneath the structure and the driveway connections and those types of things? He will be doing the concrete under the structure he will that will be the extent of his particular contract uh, Eagle Golf will be providing the aggregate uh, parking area as well as the driveway into the facility or the area I know you're you're trying to be proactive and get us to you know give you direction and I applaud you for that but not knowing how the building is going to fit on the site and where the driveways are going to be and the fact that we don't have any approvals from that I'm aware of from the say the road commission on the driveway access there's not going to be any driveway yeah but if we start <coughs> increasing the number of 
vehicles coming in out of here. There may be, you know, other things that we're not considering, like cut, tearing down some trees down closer to Dunham Road so there's a greater line of sight. I, I'm just throwing those things out as Absolutely. things that you're going to know when you actually go in and say, I need a permit to build this. Absolutely. So what? try to help me figure out your plans to get those permits for the from the county soil erosion permit. I mean, you may not have much to do here other than putting up silk fence, but you still got to go through the process on a lot of these things. Yeah, absolutely. This project, um, as you recall, we did uh, contract with HRC to do a survey. Um, we are working with them to get us the, the land survey plan so we can actually uh, obtain the soil erosion permit. Aside from that, there would just simply be the building permits and the electrical inspection permits. So that's why you said a few minutes ago, Bob, that you're working to get those plans that you need. Yes. To move forward. Yes. I, I should also clarify: um, we would need to get a site plan approval on this, um, and that's uh, it's a simple site plan, though a, a six to eight week process. Uh, so we'd be able to do that on a parallel path while we're all um, getting it ready to go for the thaw. Um, but that's that's um, we'd have to nail down those details in order for the site plan application. Does that go through the planning commission? And that, that, that would go to the planning commission. A couple questions for you. What type of attendance have you seen historically over the last year and a half? How many? people can we expect over a certain time period to become? Um, you know, it's a pretty steady market. That's one thing. We don't have a big crash of people at a certain hour. You know, you have your different kind of people. People get up and want to get eggs first thing. You have your kid, people with kids that show up at 10 o'clock. We usually have our event around 11 o'clock because that tends to usually get the early people. So we tend to have our events later in the day to keep people coming there. So it's pretty steady. I mean, it's not like we get uh, one big pack. But, but have you ever done any <clears throat> counts in terms it, of it's funny because cars or people? Jim and I or? were talking about that. When we started the market, we kept counts all the time. And over the years, you know, we, we've just become a steady market, so we haven't. Um, I could get those numbers from Jim for you, Sparks. Because I'm, where I'm driving with this question is to find out if we actually have enough parking space here. I, I'm going to repeat again, I like the idea of being <clears throat> aggressive and trying to get this done, but it seems like there's some other, like you just mentioned, the Planning Commission. And why isn't that going concurrently right now? We don't have the start. haven't had the detail, and we still don't have the detail yet in order to submit a proper application. Uh, it's a question of and trying to make it meet a timeline of interest. So. We can take the time to do all those things, um, and we're happy to do it. Uh, and it won't be open until after July. But, but James, my question is, why haven't you already started working with the Planning Commission on this? You, can you tell me that you know we've already had it on their agenda? We they've discussed it. He just said no. He just said no. Yeah. I know. I'm asking why it hasn't happened. If, if we, it's so no. important for us to take action, why aren't we doing? <clears throat> Because we, we have, I mean, we've been working diligent. I mean, the board just, uh, it was a bit, just a few months ago, the board decided to do this. And so we've worked with HRC to start the pro. I mean, we've been proactively working all along the way. We're just not at the point yet to have all the detail necessary to submit a proper site plan application in order to take it to the Planning Commission, to even have a staff review of it to take the Planning Commission. We're, we're approaching that, uh, and, and we can get there on a, on a parallel path that will allow this to get going. But to do all of that and to wait for that and to do bid specs, engineered bid specs uh, and, and bid letting and all that pushes the, the project out uh, later into the summer. We're fine doing that. We also understand that there's been some interest to make it happen sooner than later. So it's a choice. That's and that's where I'm, I'm more inclined with, with Matt here on that. I'm, I don't want to rush this thing and then... I, we don't, are there going to be plans and specs? There's for the building itself. That's what I hear, I heard. I didn't hear that. I, no, that's that's what happens when you forego engineering. Right, and I'm. There's blueprints. I mean, that's that's pretty clear. May 14th day. Critical. I mean, is that set in stone, or is there is there some? At one point, we had no other alternatives for the farmers market. Do we? 
some of the Do we still have that case, or is there other alternatives uh, we'll just put a to push here. that time frame from the 14th a little further back? We've already got it okayed from Michelle Otis that we are opening at Ore Creek, because that way we only have to move across the street and not move twice. So the market's going to open at Ore Creek this year. <clears throat> so the, the May 14th date then isn't that critical? It's not critical. How much more does it cost to have this engineered versus? It's a time. Uh, what does it cost to? Cost and time. I forget the actual engineer estimate. I want to say they came back. Their preliminary estimate was 195,000, but that was included con some healthy contingencies in there, um, as well as con construction oversight. That was their estimate, including engineering. Yes. So about another 30,000. Yeah. I just want to point out, I, I agree with Matt. That Joe, I hate rushing through a project because we don't want to end up with a mistake like we had down down the, the park here. Um, one thing that may not be apparent here is that in that area somewhere is a natural spring. Station 61 has been trying to deal with that or has issues with that water pouring out. So if they somehow hit that, you know, when they're leveling the property, you know, how are they going to deal with that? So the engineering side of this may be an important factor. Um, they got a natural spring over there. Is an artesian? No, the there? spring is between the spring is between the parking lot and the fire hall. It goes right through the township hall. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Remember when it filled up with water? The basement keeps flooding. It has continuous but pump. Something. There's a river running through there. There, there is an artesian spring out there somewhere. I don't know. I couldn't tell you exactly pinpoint where it all goes to. In my question, last Thursday after the fire authority meeting, I went in there and I'm like. It just got my attention is like, is there adequate parking? Okay, that that I don't know, and then that brought to my mind is like, well, I don't know the answer to this, and why have we gone to the planning commission? You know, because they're the ones that can say you need X amount of parking spots, and you know, I don't know that I you know can make a decision without knowing that we we got adequate space for that. Well, by looking at it, I can tell you we do because we used only that front corner of the high school, <coughs> using it, using four rows of parking for the vendors, which only left us two two rows of parking. And this has got a lot more than those two rows of parking. I'll have to go up and count the spots up there versus what we use, but we never had a full where you couldn't find a parking spot ever. <clears throat> and all we had open, you know what I'm talking about when you go in, is those front, the top two rows for parking because all the vendors used them. And knowing that you guys have an alternative place to go, I think I think we should just follow the procedures and, and do this the way we would expect anybody else that's doing any other project in the township. Let, let's follow our own rules, make sure we you know dot the I's and cross the T's so we don't make any mistakes. You know, well, I'm hey, thinking I, it's, if it's, we could shoot for the July 2nd festival opening weekend, you know, the downtown festival, that would be a good target if we could at least hit that mark. I would say that I'm. I think that this project does not need 100 percent or even 50 percent engineer review on during construction. <laughs> uh, Bob and you know our current staff. It's so close. It's just yeah. We could probably do our own construction engineer review. Yeah. yeah. I think Oversight. that's. I'm not concerned about that. But I mean, I I know I. You know, we're to be on the planning commission, and one of the first things that would happen when a developer came with an idea is you sit down and have a meeting and say, here's my conceptual plan, and it might be nothing more than your aerial photograph with a, here's the size of my structure on it or something to just get the thought juices going from the planning. And I think that while it's certainly a worthy cause, and I'm in support of this concept I don't like the idea of just you know I would I don't really want to say we're ramrodding it because we're having a you know a professional discussion about it and we can come up with a good decision but I think that if it kind of looks like we're giving ourselves favoritism if we try to do this and I that you know that survey just said that we as a local government need to be above board, and so you see where I'm coming from. I mean, I did, I, would you have done it different if it wasn't for the May 14th date? I mean, what I absolutely, and my recommendation would have been different. Um, 
you know, obviously my goal is to remain employed, so you tell me when you want it and it'll happen. Well, as a market master, I'd like it not to fall down. <laughs> no, it's kind of like we the whole have, project. We, project made, ma- yeah, I'm sorry. we made it unreasonable for yeah. Bob to give us a, a good quality uh, project timeline, giving we gave him a, a date that really wasn't reachable right. without cutting right. corners. And, and if we're not moving forward tonight, there's one other thing I'd like to bring up. I mean, I built these kind of buildings for a living, so... Um, and, and when we design them for the farmers that maybe not be putting sellable fruit in there, but might be some type of nutrient storage or something, or fertilizer storage or something else like that. But before we come to the conclusion on the size and, and the shape and the materials of construction and everything, we sit down with the user and they have a meeting and say, what do you need? And that's where we come up with a conceptual plan. and. And perhaps that's already happened yeah, already between happen. discussions with you and them, but I'm not privy to that information. You know, I don't know how many projected vendors we expect to have in the year 2025. Oh, a lot more. And is this structure going to be large enough to handle it? Is the space that we have allocated here at the old township hall sufficient to handle future growth? I mean, those are the types of things that I'd like to see an answer on before I go and authorize money. I mean, there might be a better place to build this thing. It might be right behind this township hall, for example. No. So I, I, those are the types of things that I'd like to have more information on. And I, I've said enough. Okay. How do we want to proceed? That's for the board to decide. <laughs> no, but you say the same thing. Joey, you kind of spearheaded this. Your no comment. He wants it to go. Well, there's two approaches. We can keep the path that, that was presented to begin with. We can take a path of getting further information, having it engineered. I don't really think we need an engineer. I think I think we would. I think you should take what you've got going right now and maybe slow it down a little and get it squared away and, and provide the information that Matt was looking for as far as number of units, where we think we're going to go, and, and proceed on the path that we've started here other than not forcing it to the 14th. And I think the, the appropriate method to kind of meet everything I've heard here would be kind of a hybrid approach where we will have the engineer design it. Certainly staff can oversee the construction if that's, that's what you'd prefer. Um, we already have paid for the cert. No, you're shaking your head. No, I, it sounds to me like the building's already designed. You don't need an engineer to re-engineer the building. Well, I'm going to have to do an engineered site plan. Huh. Which, I mean, county, I can't. I can't do angles. Pretty simple site plans. Fair enough. You don't need to. I mean, I, I'm. I wouldn't be opposed to you drawing the site plan, as long as you can change your angle a little bit. <laughs> Whatever the board desires. What level? That of engineering would you think would be right. appropriate for this project, if any? Right. You know, like with the, the lay of balancing. The answer or that? to that is whatever it takes to get planning commission approval. You know, the, the construction of this is pretty simple. You pick an elevation, okay, you've got to take, I mean, remove the topsoil, give me a, you know, enough space to pour the concrete, put some sand below it, and you just work backwards. I mean, that, that that's not even a very complicated construction job. It isn't much. I, I, we just approved the uh, well, last couple of years uh, open-air pavilion at the church on Runyon Lake Road out on their back 40, and, uh, you know, it isn't. It's just about where you're going to put it. That's what this is, an open-air structure. It's not, not uh, that complex. And it's part of the reason why we're comfortable uh, moving forward at a little bit faster pace on it because it is fairly simple structure we're talking about and we would still go through planning commission approval for it so. yeah i just the other thought is you don't want to risk losing the vendors we have because they have no you know i don't we don't know how it's going to go at or creek because we don't have the visibility of m59 that we've had for 12 years so we're not even sure how that's going to go or you know what kind of rates we can charge over there because we don't know well then maybe that's another good reason to slow it down <clears throat> if, if, if the market 
won't bear the uh, farmer's market over it on Heartland Road. No, we're saying you can't advertise. We can't put a lot of money into advertising a temporary site when we don't know. You know what I mean? It's it's going to be a, a difficult year for the market in in its own self. You just market it on Heartland Road at the school. If they move across the street, they're still going to find it. Um, I have one other question that I thought of. It's been a while since we've talked about the stormwater permit that we need to get from the DEQ for this site, and we had to argue with them about whether it's a, because the fire station is on property that's owned by the township. How did that eventually turn out, and would this additional structure have any bearing on that? We just talked about that today. Yeah, ironically, uh, staff was able to go to Lansing and negotiate with DEQ, and um, after we put many hours into it, but in the end it cost the township $500 permit fee. Um, well, I think they charged us a $35 late fee as well because we were two years late on it. But uh, that aside, um, this will impact it. Um, they are our population will impact it going up. There's many different factors that are going to play a role in this. Um, however, last year they were a little bit, or the year we applied and paid the $500 fee, they were a little bit more lenient working with the groups. Um, the local watershed group was also granted quite a bit of leniency. So it will come up around budget time for another discussion of how we want to proceed with that. Um, certainly staff can put up some time into it and we may be able to get by with a uh, $500 permit fee. However, I, I think the probability of that's a, not as good as it was a, that year. Um, the other alternative would be, uh, and I know it's somewhat controversial, to join the, the watershed group and pay the fees to join there and then simply we would pay the $500 fee and use all their resources. What the DEQ is permitting now is if you're part of a watershed group, you just simply link and they handle all your um, educational resources as well as uh, information. Livingston County is doing it kind of as a central hub, so um, that'll be up for discussion during the budget. It's another $1,500. Yes, I'm sorry. It's $1,500 to for Heartland Township to join that watershed group, and that would, by linking to all their work that they've already done in the county, we wouldn't have to do a, the staff time. So you'll see in the budget right now we're spending 500 a year. It's probably going to go to 2,000 a year starting next year due to a number of factors, including this, as a, one more thing on that parcel. Does the uh, stormwater permit cover all the township properties or just the one here on Heartland Road? Um, it actually covers this township hall we're in. This particular township hall falls into it. Um, ironically, Sellers Park was not completed when we paid that first $500 fee. Um, that will be coming up on their radar. And um, I don't know why Heritage Park wasn't on their list prior, but they have recently um, indicated that they want to review that particular parcel so to see if there's any um, anything that may fall into that compliance as well out there. So long story short, it's it's not going to be as simple as it was the, the first year, but uh, I don't think it's going to be. But at both of our recently constructed parks, we have on-site storage for stormwater where it allows it to infiltrate into the ground, the majority of it, in an outfall if necessary. At this particular site, we don't have anything like that. It's water falls, it just drains off to the roadside ditches. And when we start adding more parking and driveways and you know another building that's going to have water coming off of it, we got to have something, some place to <clears throat> push that water to. And right now, it's going to flow downhill to the intersection of Dunham and Heartland Road. And whether it's got a path to get on over into the wetlands from there, I don't know. And those are the types of things that I think we really need to talk about and, and make sure we have a plan in advance before we certainly begin construction. So we don't have a lot of space there to put in a, a detention pond. Do you know how far our property actually goes? 
Uh, I don't know the linear footage, but it goes uh, to Dunham, center line Dunham. Yeah, center line, center line of Dunham Road. So we'd have to take down some more trees. That will be real popular. Well, and not only that, that water flows to the south and the other water flows to the north. All goes the same place. <laughs> Just has to go around a whole block to get there. Right. Okay. <laughs> and through a big wet. So is this clear as mud for you? What's yeah, the absolutely. pleasure of the board? Joe, it's time for you to say something. Well, I'm a little reluctant not having engineered plans. Um, I really feel, I also think it's very expensive. Um, but if it doesn't delay it too much, I guess we should we should go forward and get moving on everything, get on, everything on parallel paths. I mean, that's what, I mean, we kind of, as a consensus, talked about this before, so. Let's move forward. Let's go. Get, spend up For the July date? Well, I think you could... But what what's the difference going to be? Yeah, six well. weeks. <laughs> now, how about Memorial Weekend? <clears throat> you know what? We didn't get that far with the engineers. So, I mean, we they said that quite frankly, July wasn't feasible. And anything before July first, you're talking about the fast track approach. Um, and even, even if we took the time on all the steps, I'm not going to promise you July 2nd or mid-July. Or I mean, you got to give us time for all that to happen. Um, and then we're happy to do that approach. I will just decide which, which way you want to go. Well, if you can't guarantee July even the way that we're going... No, he said with with engineering. Now, if we're going to engineering, we're going to bid specs, bid lighting, putting it out to bid. Uh, it's time, um, all those things. That's going to extend the timeline. I think we just need a hybrid. I don't think you need bid specs. I don't think you need to do everything you just described. We just need to get a drawing into the planning commission, yes, get sir. their okie dokie, and then we need to get. The permit application into the certainly the drain commission's office, and the drawing that you submit to them is the same thing you would need for basically electrical and and the actual uh, construction permit. And is that say you'd like to see all that happen before we award a contract? I'd say. Well, you have to know what you're doing before you. Can yeah, sure. I think yeah, so. contract. Uh, I understand. I'm just there's all, every step along the way. Take your time. <clears throat> and is are we putting those out to bid? Are we getting multiple? Are we doing competitive quotes for? Well, that's another complete subject that we haven't talked about yet. Well, that, all these I, I need to know. I understand uh, that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not. Yeah. We have to make a decision on that. I think that. I think that if we're and I don't know the numbers, you would know them better than I do, but we've already got procedures established as a township over a certain dollar amount we're supposed to get competitive bids. Well, we've used we, Eagle Golf without putting it out to bid. But that was, we make exceptions, I know, but I'm just trying to find out what what are our... We don't have a strict policy to that end. Uh, we, we can um, use sole sourcing uh, for... So we don't have a certain dollar amount where we're required... And there is no state law to that effect either. Okay. Personally, I would like, you know, I don't mind the sole sourcing. I think that the, the history with these contractors, the, with the, the, the pavilion uh, person, uh, I don't have a problem with that. But I would like to see approval by the Planning Commission in case we're not seeing something. And before you award contracts, you got to find out to make sure that, uh, you know, we had missed something that, you know, after the fact, after the contract, the you know, planning commissioner says, you know, let's, you got to do this, and it impacts those contracts. Right. And, and, James, I'm going to say this again. I guess you and I don't see eye to eye. We usually see eye to eye most times, but in this instance, I'm really shocked and surprised that you haven't been up front and say, we're asking you to authorize this contract for construction, 
and the Planning Commission hasn't even been consulted. It just that seems like you've misguided us in the proper direction that we should be going. And your fallback might be that you know you've asked us to do the work, but I think I need to hold you accountable to hold us accountable and say these are your procedures that you should be following and if you're going to meet this timeline, these are the steps you should be considering. I, I don't. I respectfully disagree with some of the the words you've used there. Um, I, I don't think we're talking as mutually exclusive as as that. Um, I, I've never suggested that any, we do anything but get planning commission approval. It maybe wasn't as. Uh, uh, directly addressed in the memo, I'm here to say we ought to be going through Planning Commission approval. Uh, I was suggesting that we could do that on a parallel path that was still uh, accelerated so that, you know, we get um, put together what is the, the minimal requirements to have a su successful Planning Commission uh, application, and that would be reviewed by staff, reviewed by the engineers, reviewed by Drain Commission, Road Commission, everybody else who has to review it, and go through the Planning Commission process and um, that that would be approved. It's, it sounds like maybe that uh, we're all in agreement on that and, and really maybe doing that step first. Um, um, and it's a pretty straightforward site plan. Do that first, and then we can come back uh, to award contracts uh, on a sole sourcing basis. Is that what uh, the board? I don't think it was ever the intention of us not going through planning commission. No. I know, but if you read the... I mean, we're authorizing contracts and, uh, you know, authorizing. When you authorize someone to build something, it's really hard to go back and say, I've changed my mind. It's, that's just, that's not the way things are normally done. Even on a fast track, you know what you want before you authorize someone to build it. That's where I'm concerned. And forgive me, I probably own that one. Part of that well, one, you're, like you said, you want your job. You like your job, so well, just it, it, we've asked. Since I've started at Heartland, any improvement I've done has never been through site plan. We've foregone that process. So perhaps that's my fault because I wrote that memo that's in front of you, or at least I think it did. And are we doing that for the pavilions and things? We we do it uh, it's uh, I mean it's a park. tricky timing because when when we came on board we already had site plan approval for Settlers Park and Heritage Park, including the expansion of the parking lot. So all of that was already in place. Uh, we haven't really done any projects to this point that require site plan uh, additional site plan approval. I'm glad you said that because yeah. we did follow the protocol. Absolutely we went through the planning commission. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was a phase project. Yeah. It's like it is going to be. When we put the pavilions in, there's an expectation that we take a recommendation and go through the same process. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I'm in full support of construction of the um, farmer's market pavilion at the location that's proposed. In order to authorize the contracts, would you, Bob, could you come up with a, a dollar amount that you think we should allocate to complete the engineering drawings? meaning just for site plan approval? Or is that already included in HRC's contract that they're working on that haven't finished? I will look into that and see how much of their existing contract, because what we did before was just the, the actual survey. So we could, what we were trying to do was delay and get the survey done before the snow hit the ground. We didn't realize we'd have the weather like we did now if you remember last year, we had two foot of snow on the ground on this same day. So what we were trying to do was just to prove enough to get the actual survey done so they could do the design over the course of winter. Um, we certainly would have come back for more, uh, for a larger allocation for to finish the design if needed. I'll find out the existing balance that we have. Um, either way, I'll, I'll get it designed. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to clarify. I mean, part of what was on the table as a proposal for you to consider is that we could start doing the earthwork now. We're not the the grade change over that entire rectangle is two feet. Um, so you can do that grade work without any site plan whatsoever, and that would get us a head start on things by having them out there and start pushing dirt. Um, and that's part of what we were suggesting is going ahead and getting that going because we don't have a strong frost in the ground. If there's a good thaw, get them out there and get that earthwork done so that 
and, and still do planning commission or site plan approval because you don't need site plan approval to change a grade less than three feet. So, yes, but unfortunately, you do need to get road or drain commissioner approval. Yes. In, in order to do that, you need to have a drawing. Um, is it possible that we could look at other engineers that might have more availability? I can't remember the gentleman's name, but we hired a contract engineer that did a lot of work with the cemeteries and stuff. This, he's a civil engineer, and this might be something he could pull out really quickly and economically. He is no longer independent, but okay. uh, I can certainly look into it. Just looking at other ideas to you know, help us move things along, that's all. Absolutely. Is there general consensus to go ahead and go through site plan process? I that? still don't know how, until you actually put that building on there and have your parking spots right and everything else, the way it lines up, I don't know how you can even start a bid process. Yeah, uh, that's where I'm... I mean, that's just my... Sure. Because I still I still question, uh, I know it, it looks flat out there, but well, where's all that water going to go and do, <clears throat> are, are we concerned about that or not? The amount of pervious surface we're adding is because we have a gravel. I just I look at this project in a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. and would we allow somebody else to do something to their property like this and go ahead? It doesn't look like it's going to be an issue. I just I'm not trying to slow it down either. No, I, but there's that right now. Matt made a point that there isn't any place to collect any of that water on that entire site right now. We would allow somebody to build an open air pavilion without requiring them to build a retention pond. Um, and it would all be calculated. I mean, go through engineer review. They determine if the amount of pervious surface already existing and where it falls. I mean, so there, but, but there, would, there would ultimately be a plan that we're looking at sure. yeah. that we don't have yet. Sure. That's, that's yeah. what I'm suggesting. We don't even really know what this is going to look like. And I, th and I think that's what I'm saying is if we go ahead and put together that plan so that it, it meets all the requirements to be a site plan application, let it go through the process. Everybody has a seat at the table to review it. The planning Commission approves it. Um, at that point, we have a plan. It's been approved. And it's then and only then that we'll come back to you with uh, contracts. Is that acceptable to the board? Is that good with everybody? I don't think we're not saying that we want to go forward with the con with the pavilion. I think we, we just need more information. Does anybody have a problem with that? I have a question regarding the cost, Bob. Yes. Um, you have the cost down here at 154000 plus 10000 contingencies, shy of 165000 But haven't we already spent some money on this? Yes, we have. The Shouldn't that be included in this, though? We yes, really that, again, this is construction costs. This is not the engineering costs for the survey. But isn't the engineering cost part of our total budget for it? Absolutely. So wouldn't we be over budget if we include That is correct. See, I think we need to know what that is. Do you know how much it was? I want to say the tune of like 1800 Oh. It wasn't anything, it was just so a survey. Would, yeah, okay. It, we were, and again, the contingencies I put in for my own sake. Um, yeah. <clears throat> first I learned of it, first I've learned that May 31st is not a drop dead deadline. So if we can go to July, I think, try to get it open before the, the big summer fest, I think that would work. And <clears throat> just throwing it out there, it may be feasible to have the, the parking lot constructed. I don't know if you can hold the farmer's market without a pavilion, but just a thought. You'd have the parking lot done? Absolutely. If the weather is the way it is now, I'm very confident we could have the parking lot in. At the same time? I'm just saying <clears throat> the parking lot, I, I, at the same time as, I'm sorry, I'm what, are you, what parking lot are you talking about? Resurfacing? What no, the there? gravel parking lot that the, the pavilion's going to go on. Right. If you were to unplug the pavilion, that will be there. Be a cement slab and 
maybe maybe that's not done yet either. But right, I, I think we could have the limestone, limestone spread and and just saying. I, I I would risk people walking on that and turning their ankles and things on limestone. I don't know. I think it'd be better to open it. That's what our existing parking lots are. It'd be that crushed down and packed down. That's exactly what it's going to be. Oh. Yeah. We pass that and we get to it. Right now the plan is then temporary yeah. plan is the July second. That's what that's what I heard okay. tonight. Do you have marching orders that are uh, <laughs> clear? Can I ask for one more thing. Sure. Typically, a project like this is going to have a basis of design. You know, number of square feet per occupant. Yeah, we already projections have for five years. Can you get that information to the rest of the board members? Sure. Kathy said she had it already. It's so. well, it's it's ten by ten booths. There's ten on each side, so it's set up right now for twenty vendors. But you're looking for more information than that. Yep. Can five you? or ten year projections. Where are they going to park all their vehicles? I go to a lot of farmers markets myself, and you know I want to make sure that <clears throat> while you know their sale area might be sufficient, they've got a pickup and they've got a trailer that's there. And how is all that going to, going to fit with the? Uh, you know, where are they going to park? Usually, they Talk sometimes the they like close them? by. Yeah. <clears throat> this one's set up. Yeah, it'd be nice for you guys to have a drawing, but the way Bob. And like Joe and I got together, kind of and did it. But um, it's going to have limestone on both sides to back their trailers right up into the pavilion. So the whole thing is limestone on either side. And I assume it's going to be big enough for a trailer and a pickup. The width of the limestone. Yeah. <clears throat> so. The idea was so the farmers wouldn't have to move their move at, move the stuff. They and basically the back their trucks up and set up their right. their displays and start selling. It's and even a car. Similar to other farmers markets. Better than Brighton. Brighton, they have to move their cars. Yeah, move. Yeah, Brighton. Yeah. I think Hall too. Yeah, Hall downtown. They have to move their cars. But if you go to if you Milford. go to like Ann Arbor, Milford um, too. They, they just Milford. back. They just back Milford, in. Yeah, just like Ann Arbor. And, and South Lyon, they just back in. There's enough room for them to do that. And then they have all their extra. Product in their truck, and they unload it as they need it, and then just makes it easier for the farmers. And you get more farmers to to participate if you make it a little easier for them. Well, and it opens up, keeps the parking open for the people who want to shop. Right. You know, when you got twenty vendors parking cars. So, okay. so what are we? What is the plan now? I know. What are they looking are for? Are we doing an engineered project? Engineered only to the extent that is required, a minimal requirement for site plan. For site plan. Yeah. So then, that'll have we, that site plan will have everything laid out, the distance for the cars, like Kathy yeah, just talked <clears> about <throat> the limestone, how it's positioned on the on the. And once we lay that out, we would go back to then the goes, then, goes, then it goes to the planning commission, and they approve it and say right. that. Then we go back to these three companies and, and just, you know sign the contracts for the work. They may need to adjust their budget if they need another twenty feet of you know twenty cubic yards additional of this material or something else based on that. Yeah, we'll have more specific specs because of that. Right. Yeah. Not necessarily specs, but quantities. Yes. Right. So will that process delay the project all the way back to July 1st? My only concern is there are events in town that you'd like to hit with the farmer's market. One, you're going to miss Memorial Day. I don't think that's reasonable. But I wouldn't want to cut it too close to a summer festival on July 2nd. So, I mean, I'd pick a target date if possible in mid-June to get it done so that you're not pushing up against that deadline and maybe not making it. And if that's feasible based on what we just laid out, I have to leave that up to you. Do you think you, that would be something that's workable? Absolutely. My job's on the line. It will be done. No. <laughs> Stop that. that. No, I, I think it's feasible. Um, and just, I've worked, I've done a lot of homework with these contractors. Um, Eagle Golf says, 
even in these conditions today that we have where we had snow on the ground three days ago, he believes, worst case scenario, he's three to four weeks. Uh, Heartland Electric said one week. That's a real simple drop. Um, the pavilion company is already researching uh, hotel rates right now. They're going to come down. They actually prefab the majority of it off-site and truck it in. Um, and they said that they can have it turnkey with concrete in 30 days. Um, Tawas, I think they were 27 days, if memory serves me correct. So um, that's all the site work done. That's kind of the push to when I was looking for approval was to try and get Randy in there. I think we can have the data HRC has already in place on the survey. I think it would not be too much more to develop uh, the drawings for the soil erosion permit. We could submit those, and my understanding is correct. We don't need site plan approval for that. Even if he doesn't put down the limestone, if we can get that land balanced so it's flat, we're ahead of the game. Um, my fear is we wait to approve everything, and we have a pavilion contractor, an electrical contractor ready to go who are waiting on Randy. That was my goal. Um, you know, tasked with the deadline target date, I was trying to deliver a turnkey package. In the grand scheme of things, Matt, you're absolutely correct. Not so sure we, if you guys approved it tonight, if I would turn around and say, hey, let's get this pavilion contract signed. What it does is it prevents me having to wait for a meeting to come back. However, what I would start with is getting Randy Pecan's or Eagle Golf's proposal signed so we can get that work started. Um, we can do it this way too. So um, I'm confident we can, we'll do our best to, to meet those targets. I think the, the intended target date is clear, and obviously the sooner the better. I think uh, you haven't really put a whole bunch of hurdles in. I think it's a, a hybrid approach to do it correctly, and uh, um, I don't see any issues with it. Okay. Any other comments? Concerns? I, I just want to be clear. If we approve the land balancing before... We haven't approved anything yet. No. no. What I'll do is I'll come back and I'll most likely bring them as separate contracts. Okay. Um, what I intend to do tomorrow is meet with HRC, see if we can get um, the survey plotted so we can get the, the storm runoff calculation so we can apply for the uh, soil erosion permit. If we get that approved, I can run by the county. If they're they believe it's kosher, then most likely what I would do is bring that particular drawing back with Randy's more accurate number because he'll be able to pinpoint. If you notice, he has a large range on there because he hasn't seen them yet. So I'll be able to really highlight based on quantities. We can spell it out. You guys will be more in tune with what he's actually doing out there. So That's a question. Is Would the board be inclined to approve the land balancing contract uh, without having planning commission approval on the site plan we would i would say i would probably approve it on you know in advance uh, if we get planning commission approval at a later date mm -hmm. conditional on planning commission approval and then we could get going right away yeah i see <clears throat> is that we've done that in the past mm -hmm. but i don't think i'm inclined to do that this evening i understand that I just didn't want to wait. I didn't want to waste your, our time or your time putting right. together that next agenda item if, if we wanted to go a different direction. So I'm, I'm just. I hope I'm wrong, but from what I'm seeing in Livingston County, they're getting you know, water. Everyone's concerned about water quality, and even a little job like this, adding it to the existing Hero Center building that's there, I'm. Predicting, we're probably going to have to put in some type of water drainage to, to slow that water down before it gets off site, and that would be something the earth or contractor could certainly do. But it's another cost to the construction project. Hopefully, there's enough contingency funds in there to address something like that. Still, but we would prefer to know that now than after the fact, after, after we started. Is that what you're saying? Sure. Okay. Anything else that you need tonight? I'm all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. One more question. When do you think this will go to the Planning Commission? Uh, as soon as the site plan's finished. 
Hello. That's a good answer. <laughs> I honestly will get started on it right away. I don't know the planning commission's schedule. Um, the next already, date is February 11th. February 11th. I uh, was, yeah, all the agencies have, have time to review. I talked to Troy, and he thought six to eight week time turnaround to planning commission approval was probably in the realm of reality. So uh, I don't pretend to manage their agenda either. Um, I mean, give us a couple weeks to put this together. If we can get it on first of or end of March, first of April. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we go to our board and manager's reports. Uh, Trustee Kalani. <coughs> Uh, a couple things. One, um, I attended the Michigan Township Association meeting down in De uh, Detroit. I guess it was the first time in Detroit in a few years. Um, attended a couple of the sessions. One that was interesting to me was Township's perspective on uh, uh, public infrastructure, including drains. Uh, there was a uh, the supervisor from Delhi Township. James, uh, I think it was Delhi, uh, Elzinger? Yeah, the manager, yep. Yeah, the manager. Elzinger. Yeah, yep. Anyway, he uh, mentioned to say, he said to say hello. Yeah. Um, it, I find these things an interesting conference. It's, it doesn't really ever change. It's the same kind of thing you go. So I, I haven't been there in probably, what, six years? Five or six years it's been, I think. Um, but uh, there's a I was amazed at how many people were there. I do not think Detroit's the best location for that conference, though. That Renaissance Center is terrible to get around. So, um, the other during, thing, during Auto Show Week, no, no, no less. The other thing I'd like to just bring up, um, and I meant to bring this up at our previous meeting um, back in January 19th, um, January 19th, uh, just so that the board is aware, construction plans for the Speedway Rebuild and Convenience Station have been submitted for review, and staff is waiting for was waiting for brick samples. So I'm not sure they brought those samples <coughs> yet. Um, Wood Edge Site Condominium is nearly complete. Developer is requesting final inspections. Uh, construction plans for the mugs, mug and bops fuel and convenience station have been submitted for review. The preliminary plan development plans for Newberry Place, uh, Mary, Mayberry Homes project at M59 and, Fe and Fenton Road in Pleasant Valley have been reviewed by McKenna and Associates. And the review letter has been forwarded to Mayberry Homes and there's a plan for meeting with the project team uh, that was scheduled uh, last month prior to the next uh, planning commission meeting. The final PD plans for Walnut Ridge Estates, 64 site condominiums north of Venture Church, have been reviewed and are tentatively scheduled for 128. Well, that date is not probably the February 11th meeting. <laughs> Just a reminder that the Planning Commission has a, uh, we have a new. Are you the? Who's oh. the new? Who's the new? Troy. Oh. Troy is he here? Troy's not here. No. Troy's not here. We had the coffee for him. Okay, you guys had the coffee. Man. I couldn't be. <coughs> Couldn't do that one, so anyway, that's it. I don't have anything else okay. to say. Thank you, Trustee Germain. I would like to um, let you know that the um, manager review committee discussed uh, several weeks ago about getting a outside professional to do a study proper compensation, including benefits for man township managers. Um, we had some information that James had provided that he dug up on his own, but we felt that hiring an outside person or company, rather, to uh, do that type of study would benefit the township long term. So the question is, does the township board in support of that? recommendation and if so how do we want to proceed do we have an idea of what the cost would be yeah I think why don't we make that an agenda item mm -hmm. I don't think I'm in support, support of you researching it and, get, and coming back with a re report <coughs> is that acceptable to the board Absolutely. Okay. okay thank you 
Is that it? That's it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Harper? Bill report. Trustee Petrucci? Saturday, February 6th. Next Saturday is the uh, Fire Authority's Awards uh, at the high school. And it's at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's the awards? The awards ceremony the awards is at ceremony. 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, it's 3. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Clerk Shofu? Uh, absentee ballots should go out this week. Um, we're still working on the election, uh, getting the election inspectors all lined up. Uh, everything's everything else going pretty smoothly. And it was just want to make mention that it was the most successful winter fest ever without snow. <laughs> there were absolutely no injuries on the sledding hill. <laughs> no. Went, Fairly well for the conditions. You know, I, I thought about this afterwards, after I was out there. It, the Metro Parks over at Huron Meadows has a ice making machine or a snow making machine. I don't know. I think it's portable. Um, yeah, they bring it down to Detroit for their sledding hill. I, okay. And maybe if next year, if we run into a similar problem, we get that out there a few days in advance. We don't have water. And it was 40 degrees. Well, you bring a tanker. I don't know how they do that. I don't know how they do that at... Uh, There's a fire truck. It, 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 down there, they, make a, they make a mountain of snow, and then they actually <clears throat> tool it around in trailers. This they do will that, never happen. They do that cross yeah, it's country. never going to happen. It's never going to happen again. It won't be again. <laughs> That's right. It'll never happen. Look how many beautiful <laughs> memorials we've had lately. Yeah. Well, it's going to rain so. this Memorial Day. <laughs> Just so you can want to know. We're on that kind of five or six year... Turn. Turn. Yeah, has it rained in a while? No. Treasure Horning? Uh, everybody will be happy to know that Walmart paid their taxes today. I thought you'd like to know that. And uh, the Farmer's Market is having their annual meeting in Potluck on Saturday, February 27th at 11 o'clock here at the Hall. And we do have our annual meeting, talk about the rules, things going on, and everybody's invited that would like to attend. Okay. I can email you a formal if you'd like to remember the date. Please. I don't have anything this evening. Uh, Manager Wickman? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I just piggyback real quick on Trustee Colini. Uh, the, the MTA conference is moving uh, time. Of the, I think it's in April next year. Usually it's oh, in, yes, in that that's April. Yes, that's right. I heard that. Uh, and I think it's in Lansing next year. So uh, it sounds like going forward it will be in that April time frame if that was ever uh, an issue for you. Uh, I want to consider looking at that again. I know that actually helps me out. I might actually make one every now and then again. I uh, just wanted to highlight a couple things from the operational reports from last week. Uh, I've talked with some of you about Pleasant Valley Road uh, that wasn't on the agenda tonight from the Road Commission. That's um, gravel road that was due to get a rehab to gravel. Um, they're still working on a scope. We're working them with, on, a, on, on that with them. Uh, they did have some hesitation about questioning the likelihood of whether that might be paved somewhere down the road. And uh, I was able to share with um, Mike Crane the board's d discussion on that not too long ago uh, about that very interest. And, and so uh, hopefully I think uh, we're not, they're not in a position to promise that they can participate in the cost sharing for paving in the, in the very near future. And so if it's still five, seven years or more, uh, uh, till that can be, we would certainly be still advocating for a healthy investment there to make that a, as good a road as we can in the meantime, not to uh, be short-sighted about it. So, uh, I have a question on that. How do they go about their prioritizing of, of, <coughs> of projects such as? As a matter of fact, um, I just got an email today, and I forwarded it to James and Matt, and I, asked, I didn't have your new email in here. Who, who else was on the um, task force? Glenn was. The Rose. Yeah. Um, they have so $800,000, they and they're looking for requests from the townships for their meeting in the end of February. Um, so that's their pavement yeah. preservation program. <coughs> we do you have some yeah, information you on that? that? That's their annual pavement right. preservation. Oh, that's preservation? Yeah. Oh, okay. It doesn't go to any right. Um They do have a preservation program for the Last year, we got some. Will give us the hundred thousand dollars of that eight hundred thousand. Um, we are seeking that again this year, and it just covers our overall pay to road millage. That's what we're looking for. 
and that's how they do it. They'll assign it to one project, but they'll pick it on our behalf. Um, <coughs> last year was spent in Rome. So um, we are applying for that, but it's not really specific. To, it'll be specific to one of our road millage, we'll, road millage projects because we'll get a larger benefit of that. And that one's somewhat competitive, and, and we we have gotten that. As far as their other priorities, I mean, they, they're looking at traffic counts and, mm -hmm. and other factors that don't necessarily, and they're, they're certain, actually, their priority is uh, rehab and maintaining existing paved roads. I mean, they even talked in specific terms of should the road funding bill actually come through with what's with the best case scenario, and they see very positive cash flow five years out, um, their concentration is taking care of the existing paved roads. They're not really excited about necessarily finding new paved roads uh, when they have that issue, uh, but they understand that this is an important one. If there's a candidate for one, this is it. Um, so they kind of talk both sides of it. What if we were to have everybody in the township call Mike Crane? <laughs> okay. At least certainly everybody that lives along Fetna. Valley. When, when we get those phone calls, we always encourage them not to pass the buck to because we will advocate on residents' behalf, and we encourage them to for them to hear it directly from them as well. I'm getting a lot of emails from folks on Pleasant Valley because it's just been horrible, just horrible. <coughs> I know they dumped some gravel this past week, but usually those are in front of the. Well, they're all bad right now because it's mm -hmm. uh, you get the freezing thawing mm -hmm. thing happening earlier than normal. Yep. Uh, so a couple other highlights. Um, I did mention uh, Amy Neary is uh, leaving McKenna, and uh, I have reached out to her. I haven't heard back from her yet just to see if she could be a part of our transition plan uh, rather than somebody else from McKenna. I don't have an answer on that. Um, regardless of that, I'm uh, fully confident that we have the capacity to keep the Newberry project moving through. Um, uh, budget, just wanted to acknowledge that our, our next meeting, regular meeting, is the 16th. Um, I'm not sure how much uh, re the rest of our agenda we're going to get through, so I'm, I'm concerned uh, uh, about that. We'll want to talk about um, a special meeting, I'm guessing, the week of the 22nd. Um, if you have your calendars, I know somebody had a conflict on Tuesday the 23rd. Somebody suggested that Wednesday the 24th as being a possibility. Um, Do we have a meeting next week? No, two weeks from, to, from tomorrow night. <coughs> Take a look at your calendars, maybe the 24th. We'll work for everybody. Is Wednesday the 24th? 24th. Bill's out of town next week. Yeah, that, that works for me. 24th? The 24th is a Wednesday. And we can put that on at 630. Would that be acceptable? Work session, budget work session. Hearing no objections, well, 24th at 6.30. And then uh, just to acknowledge that I'll, I'll be out at conference the rest of the week in Port Huron. Uh, I did all want to mention a couple things as well on the uh, the Aspland, uh, the tree company. Uh, they have been parking here at Settlers Park. Just as an update from the operational report, um, that the, that's not permissible uh, long term under zoning. So that's just a temporary thing. Uh, they'll be out in a couple of weeks, and, and we're not going to be talking with them about a long term. Um, uh, parking out there. Uh, they'd have to go uh, for that type of use. They'd have to go to an industrial zoned area. Uh, so just as an update from the operation report. And then uh, did also want to acknowledge the uh, Bullard Road uh, notation. Uh, they did ask us, uh, the Road Commission asked if we could help participate in uh, costs for some tree removal uh, of about ten to twelve thousand dollars and if we could do that, that they were willing to, uh, you know, take on the drainage improvements uh, for the stretch of Bullard Road. This is north of Clyde, uh, up up through Reed. Um, there's a, about a quarter mile section that's uh, quite a bit of grade and close trees, and that they would um, uh, they do some improvements that might be as much as fifty thousand. So. Um, I think everybody would agree that'd be a good leverage of money. I just want to acknowledge that, or if, if there are any questions or concerns from the board on that. 
and then just to thank everybody for uh, Winterfest for planning and participating. But um, happy to answer any questions the board may have. I really do think the people that were out there at Winterfest were having a blast when I was there. My grandkids each won a little toy, so yeah, they were happy. They, they were all having fun. <laughs> On that Bullard Road request that you just mentioned, you said that the road commission has reached out to us. Will that be something we discuss at greater length at a later time? Will there be an agreement on that, or how? To, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just a heads up on that discussion, um, and that would be in a future action item. So if you do have any questions in the meantime, or concerns, or objections, I guess let us know. Anything else for the manager this evening? If not, we'll take a brief recess and we'll decide. Uh, yes, Mr. West. Real quick, if I could, I just wanted to introduce everybody to Matt Esper. He is our water plant operator in charge. I don't know if you've all met him, but uh, he just wanted to come here this evening and say hi to you and introduce you.